Hi, this is Ron St. Dennis and I'm with Acuity Solutions. One of the most common questions that I get asked by new NX users, primarily those that are coming from uh, different CAD systems, is uh, how do I bundle up a whole assembly with all the components uh, in a single folder or zip file to, to share with a supplier or customer, uh, especially when it's distributed uh, in different folders on the Windows file system? So the easiest way to do that is with the uh, assembly clone command. Uh, it's a command that uh, needs to, it works from within NX, so it needs to have NX loaded. You do not have to have an assembly loader. You don't have to have part file uh, loaded because it will come up right here. You can, you can, uh, you can use the command finder to, um, to find clone assembly, or you can, it's right here under the men, menu, under assemblies, under cloning. So there's two there's two options here. We're in native mode here. We're we're operating in uh, native NX, so we're not in manage mode. We're not in Team Center. So there's only two options here. One is to create a clone assembly, a copy, and the other one is to edit an existing assembly. And I'll talk about both of those. Uh, the other two options that would be available in a manage mode in Team Center would be uh, import assembly and export assembly. So we're going to talk about just the native mode today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the quickest route to uh, uh, get a whole assembly into, into uh, one folder. So we're going to click on uh, create a clone assembly. So you'll notice that this is a little, uh, this is the main tab. There's four tabs here. This is the main tab. So it has uh, at the top, you can add the assembly, add a part. And there's also a default cloning action, which is to clone. And there's, you can create exceptions to that action. Uh, at the bottom uh, is, uh, uh, talks about uh, the report, um, picking what you need for the report. So the first thing I do is I'll, I'll come down here and I'll set this to a full report. I want a full report. Uh, and it's going to report it to the inf information window. So the next thing I do is go here to the load options. The load options are replicated or they're inherited from, from the index session that you have open. So uh, normally, if you're normally loading it from a directory or as saved, it'll, it'll load uh, properly. Uh, if you're the only... Um, Exception to that rule is that uh, if you're using search directories, directories, you have to set those up uh, from the file um, assembly load options uh, in the NX uh, menu structure. So uh, I know that this is already all in one uh, in one folder. So I'm going to load it from directory, and then I'm going to add the assembly. So I'm going to pick the top assembly here, and it's going to load the whole thing. So the next we're going to go is we have to tell it how we're going to name the new assembly. So there's a couple options here. Uh, username means that it's going to prompt you for a name for every for every assembly, a subassembly, and a part file. Uh, and you can create exceptions to that. But we're going to define a naming rule. So we're going to say we're going to add a prefix. You can add a prefix. You can add a suffix. You can uh, do a, a replace string, or you can do uh, you can rename it. You can just rename the clone, uh, yeah, rename the clone uh, version, uh, give it a name, and it'll number uh, every component and every subassembly. Uh, so it'll it'll uh, take care of all of that. So we're just going to call this. Uh, we're going to add a C, uh, suffix to this. Call it ref uh, underscore. So this is going to add ref underscore to every component, every assembly, subassembly name. And then you'll see that it it. Uh, it sets the naming rule here. We just defined it. Then you got to tell it where you want to put it. So we're going to uh, we're going to go out here. We're going to put this right on the C drive, and we're going to call it because we want to get to it easy. We're going to create a new folder there and call it temp underscore assy. So we'll, it'll be easy to find. Okay. So here you can see it, it's set there. So here, if you wanted to create a log file to save the output, um, the text output that, uh, that tells you everything that it did, you can, here's where you specify the output log file. Uh, and you can also load and apply an existing log file. So now that we've gone through these three tabs, we're going to, uh, I want to go back to naming here and just talk about exceptions very briefly. So when you go in here to exceptions, it'll give you all the components. And it's going to apply the default naming rule 
but the name default uh, uh, clone naming, which is the name the naming rule that we created to each one. So if we wanted to change one of these, if we wanted to give it a username, we could put it here. And this, and then if we hit apply here, it's going to ask us for a name. We're not going to do that in this case. We just want to make a clean copy with a, with a suffix added to it. So let's go back to the main here. I want to talk about one more thing. The default cloning action is to clone here. Uh, you can add an exception to that as well. And what and your options are, if you pick one of these, you can retain, which means it's going to re retain the reference back to the original part which means the new, the new assembly, uh, when you load it as saved, if you, if you load it as saved, it's going gonna, it's gonna to pull it from the original directory. So we don't want to do that here because we really want a clean copy. The other option here is to replace. So you could actually replace a part with another part at this point. And, and when you do that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to prompt you for a part. So that's uh, just a little note on the two exception uh, uh, boxes that you can choose. So when we're ready to go here, and I think we are ready to go, we're going to uh, we're going to go, we're going to uh, we're going to dry run this, and when you do that, it's going to give you it's going to give you the information window that's going to tell you what it's going to do. These are, there's a line in here for each part. It tells you what part it's taking and what what it's going to rename it to and where it's going to put it. Okay, so we can close that, and now the dry run is turned off. We can execute this. And it'll give you the same information window. This time it's done it. So now if we go, um, we go to our file explorer here. Open our temp assembly folder. Here's all of our top assembly and all the components. So here you can just You can clone, you can uh, zip that up, and you're and you're ready to send it off. So if if any in if if you want to start over at any time during this process, you can just hit clear, and it clears out everything, and you can go through the steps again. So uh, one more word about uh, this other option: cloning, edit existing assembly. The main difference here is that. It sets this to retain, which means it's going to retain all the original, um, retain all the original components and all the references to the original compo components in in the uh, in the assembly structure. So uh, you can uh, you can you can actually replace components here, right? So if you want to uh, edit uh, an existing structure and replace a component, you could do it right here instead of loading the part replacing it from the from the um, assembly uh, manager and then uh, doing a file save. So uh, that's about it for now. I hope that you uh, got a little bit out of this and uh, thanks for watching. And as always, thanks for uh, visiting acuityinc.com.